Hello everybody and welcome back to War Thunder. Today's video is brought to you by Jim Chamberlain, who clearly wants me to get cancer. And that's fine guys, because I know not only do you want to see me fly out with some very challenging planes, you also want to see me fly out with planes that are going to give me the most malignant, non-treatable, vicious form of cancer. And that's fine. I'm, I'm sure that by the end of this video, I will teach you guys how you can use the Yak-15 and possibly do well in it. Alright, so there's a lot of things to talk about with this plane. Let's get started. First off, the Yak-15 is one of the earliest jets that you can unlock in the entire game. And that is the same with the USSR. It's one of the earliest jets that you can unlock over here in the tier 5 line. It's all the way with the Yak-15P both combined together. Yak-15P has a battle rating of 5.3. The Yak-15 has a battle rating of 5.7. If you remember the video yesterday that I did on the Horton 229, the Horton 229 has a battle rating of 6.0. So because these ones have a lower battle rating, that could mean two things. Either these planes are worse than the Horton 229, or there's some Russian bias going on. I can leave the conspiracy theories to you guys. So the maximum speed is about 800 kilometers per hour, and I should actually mention that I spent about 1,400 Golden Eagles last night to try and upgrade this thing. It's not fully upgraded, but all the essentials are right there. And I'm kind of regretting the fact that I just spent 1,400 Golden Eagles on this thing, but whatever. For the sake of the video, and for the sake of you guys, I did it. I took the plunge. I took one for the lads. 800 kilometers per hour, about the maximum speed, which is less than the 900 for the Horton that we did yesterday. One of the earliest jets for the Germans. And so that's actually kind of... Well, that's kind of pretty damn low, actually. There's a lot of props that can keep up momentum with this plane. And to, to call this 800 kilometers per hour as maximum speed, the thing almost never gets to that unless it's in a very steep dive. Turn time 8.2, I think I can kind of actually agree with that because this thing can combat prop planes quite well when it's at low speed. It can turn, t turn fight against them quite well. Rate of climb 25.1, that's an absolute lie. This thing has a terrible rate of climb. It doesn't climb at all. Like, I think a toddler could climb a tree faster than this thing could. Uh, to give you a perspective of how other planes might be better, if you take a look at like the Yak-9P over here, which looks visually very similar to this thing, but it's a prop from the Tier 4 lineup and has a battle rating of 5.0, it has a pretty much same rate of climb. So that's the difference between them. There is near enough no difference, even though that this thing is a higher battle rating, higher tier, has a jet engine, that jet engine is pretty darn weak. It is armed with two 23mm cannons with 120 ammo. Now, right there and then, 120 ammo is not a lot to work with. Perhaps if it was for a single cannon, then it'd be a decent amount, but for two cannons, you're gonna be spending that ammo very, 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 very quickly. Now, 23mm cannons are quite nice, but you have to make sure that you're using the right belt for this thing. There are a multitude of different belts that you can use. Usually, I recommend stealth ammo. However, with this plane, I would recommend using air target ammo. And the reason for it is because air targets and stealth is completely different. Stealth, for example, has API all throughout. And what I found actually using stealth ammo was that it was very frustrating trying to get kills because not only did I have 120 bullets to work with, I couldn't exactly see where my shots are going, but not only that, I just felt like it wasn't doing enough damage just from two cannons and not enough ammo. So I would highly recommend using the air targets belt because not only do I have tracers, but the fragmentation rounds do, do a lot more damage than the API. And in order to get kills of this thing, you have to try to maximize your ammo that you do have, try to maximize that damage output, and the fragmentation is going to be the absolute best thing to do. So I've tried to specifically lower my BR when I'm using this because against other jets, you're going to have a really, 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 really difficult time of taking them on, I would highly recommend lowering the BR as much as possible so that you can take on other prop planes and it seems to have worked for me so far for my tests. This is the armor, check that out, protects the pilot, yeah he's got a big thick slab of metal along his back. This is the internals here, as you can imagine that is the jet engine, if you didn't know that I, I don't know what's wrong with you. And the guns are up here in the nose, that's pretty much what it is, fuel tanks right there, so on and so forth, even fuel tank right in the middle. Check that out. Okay, guys, I'm excited to go out. Actually, no, I'm not excited to go out. 
in this plane, but okay, fuck it, let's do it. Here we go, a match on Pelilu. You can hella bet that I'm not gonna cap that point. It's not happening. So, I want you guys to notice how I'm going to climb here, and how fast that this thing loses speed in this climb. So, this is actually not too steep of an angle for a jet plane, for any other jet for that matter, any normal jet, but I'm losing speed rapidly. One thing that I do really like about this thing, watch when we start to approach the stalling speed here, it's not going to just like completely nosedive. What I really like about this, look at that, it just goes quite flat. I like that. That's one cool feature that a lot of planes that I noticed don't really have. They just kind of like start nosediving in order to gain speed again. This thing kind of just like, I don't know, it glides, which is nice. So there's uh, another Yak-15 on my team. Oh, Yak-15 brothers. <gasps> look at that! There's one there, there's one there. Wow. This is so awesome. But the matchmaker has clearly worked here. That's nice. Uh, I tried to lower my BR as much as possible when I'm using this. And it seems to have worked, so I am happy with that. Check out my Yak-15 bros. Let's see who's gonna get the most kills. Al, Al for you, all for you, you're... Okay. Alrighty then, let's go. So these fragmentation rounds are actually pretty darn good. Like, really darn good, actually. At killing planes. So I imagine this year 2 is going to go down really quickly. If not for me, then that BF109. So probably going to be for me then. Here we go. I need to make sure that I don't spray this thing too fast. Okay, so I already set him on fire. Like, that's how awesome this thing is. And a bomber on fire is like a flying comet. Or a meteorite or something falling from the sky. But anyway, somebody else stole that, so that's what it is. Uh, ooh! One thing I should mention, look at that turn time! See, that turn time is actually pretty good. That's how wide I meant by it can keep up with prop planes in a turn. So, but the one thing, the one downside about this plane is that like a jet, like any other jet out there, uh, it suffers from actually being hit, especially in the engine. Whereas if you get shot in the jet engine, then you're going to catch fire, and if you're on fire, you're pretty much fucked straight away. Uh, that fire is not going to go out, you're going to burn to death. So I have to make sure that I don't get hit at all. Like, getting hit is not an option. I have to play it kind of safe, but I don't think as, as wimpy as I was in the Horton yesterday. Like, the Horton, I really had to pick my fights. I mean, I will still have to pick my fights here, but I can be a bit more... I don't know. Aggressive about it, I suppose. Alrighty then. Somebody already has four kills, but no surprise. He's using, guess what? A Fokker Wolf. Fokker Wolf like with 10,000 cannons. And big caliber cannons as well. Here we go. Here's my attack run. Say hello to my 23mm. Boom, 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 boom. See? Check that. Look at that damage. Come on. You cannot lie that that is not good. That is pretty fucking good. You know what, I could go in there, but check out that mess. If I'm gonna go in there, I have to make sure I have the speed. The need for speed. I has the need for speed. And they has the need to kill me. So... Let's not go- Oh my god, that's my Yak-15 brother. No, I have to go in to help. I cannot leave one of my Yak-15 brethren behind no man shall be left behind all right here we go me 410 because that's clearly the most important target here clearly Woo! he's gone and then there's a plane right over here somewhere but I'm actually gonna let him go and the reason why is because I do have to play a little bit wimpy see if I turn back in I'd have a whole another problem to deal with and that would suck that's an LA-9 and that thing can actually really screw me up because it has a very powerful cannon. I can't remember which one. It's either 30mm or 23mm. But it's very powerful, I know that. So I'm actually going to speed away because see if I did turn in, I would be so screwed right now. I would have so much to contend with. But that is what it is. Let me uh, regroup with my allies. That far cool got owned. Okay. It's impossible. Absolutely impossible. Now I can turn back in. Now that I've got the power to the masses here we go Ooh. yak nine gone that fragmentation is really good I played a lot of games last night using stealth ammo and it's because I played probably like four games and I just got frustrated I was getting so annoyed last night because 
I'm a, I'm a firm believer of stealth ammo, and I just couldn't believe that API would be that crap, but it was that crap. Like, the API was just doing no damage at all. And I even had a game where I racked up guess how many, guess how many kill assists I got. I got 11 kill assists in one game using the API rounds from stealth ammo. Like, fuck me, dude. I was so, so, like, suffering and annoyed inside. But the fragmentation is clearly better, as you guys can see. Uh, laying waste to the enemy hordes. Die. Apparently, my fuel is overheating at 98 degrees. Huh. And my fuel... Apparently, I have a fuel leak as well, but it doesn't really look that massive. I don't know what that's about. Hmm. It is what it is. Five kills! Actually, the most kills. Even more than the... Fucker Wolf, wow. Times are changing. So the plane actually, I mean, it's not bad overall. Like, the cannon is fine. It's just the speed that's really, that kind of lets it down. Uh, it's still not treacherous, though. Like, I don't know. I'm sure there's worse. Well, is there worse planes out there? I don't know. It's fine. It's fine for what it is. Okay. So he's dead. There's a Yak 9. A Ho 229. That Ho 229 would seem quite fun to kill, actually. I always like killing these batarangs. Boom! He's on fire. Well, he ain't putting that one out. No fire extinguishers in planes. Of course, it's not my kill, though, because, you know, fire doesn't mean anything, so... You know, whatever. Uh oh That looked lethal. So, I'm hoping that I can... Oh my god! Oh my Jesus, where did he come from? Was that the Tempest? That was the Tempest underneath me? What the fuck? Oh my god, I'm dead. So how many kills did I get? I got 5 kills in the Yak-15. Alright, we'll fly out into another game. Alright, so here we are in another match. Looks like the matchmaker is kind of decent. This time we're on Pacific Hidden Base. Probably my most favorite map because it's just so ridiculous with all the overhangs. I mean, come on, seriously, is there actually any place in the world that looks like this? Where you've got like all these intertwining rock formations? It's like, please explain the science about behind how some of these holes exist in these arches. Arches. <laughs> Arches. Alright. So, I think what happened in the last game was that I kind of had like a lapse in concentration, that's the reason why I died. Because in all my encounters previous to that last one, you guys probably noticed what I was doing, where I would kill a guy, and then rather than going back in for more, I would just fly away, and then just recuperate. I would reassess the situation, where am I at, where are the enemies at, gain some altitude, get in a better position, and then go back in, sort of thing, right? And then at the very end, uh, I did, just went in, dude. I went balls deep, and I got gangbanged. There's a guy beneath me, there's a guy on top of me, this guy from the side. It was a traumatic experience, like, something that will emotionally scar me for the rest of my life, probably. Okay, that guy's turning, and I can't, I can't keep up with that. I'm going way too fast. Way too fast for that one. I would like to get, get it, but I'm going way too fast. Fuck with just down here. Oh, and BF109 as well. Hi. Check him out. I think I'm gonna go for the BF109 here. Come on. I'm not asking for a lot. Just asking for a few shots. A few shots, that's all. But look at the turn time on this thing. It's so good. It's like a prop plane. Okay. Not quite. Damage to the right flap is still not enough. What the flag is that? Is that Serbia? He might be a Serb. I'm gonna shoot down a Serb, or possibly a Russian. But his name is Seaman. Hmm, sounds dirty. Farquhar. Still didn't get the kill, for fuck's sake. That's that's what comes down to the uh, ammo. It's 120 rounds, and then you have to reload this thing. You have to make sure that when you're using this plane that you have it equipped on a crew with like maximum reload because you just you cannot fly out this with this thing with like 30 second reload or even above that because it just takes way too long it's gonna happen way too frequently you need to have really fast reload speeds mine's like 13 and even that feels quite long 120 rounds not a lot to work with gotta be careful ooh it's a two versus two duelist mamba sick russian i don't remember him in the top 10 i don't remember him that's cool. Unique title. I've got mine out as well. I like it. I like my unique title. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to be sneaky. I'm gonna dive a little bit. And now I'm gonna engage the LA-7. 
high. Up a little bit, please. Not accounting for the gravity drop. And he's trying to go for our landing craft, I think. Fuck me with a stick. There we go. Jeez. I think I damaged him enough that he could actually crash, but my god, that took a long time. Alright. Gonna turn around here, around the rock. Because there's a BF-109 just in this location. Hey! It's that same guy. Seaman. Hi, Seaman. This must be like his favorite area on the map. That's why he always comes here. Come on, Seaman. Fuck. Alright, Seaman is flying away. I think his plane might be faster than mine. Let's find out. High speed chase is here. Oh, yeah. Look at these rock formations. Sorry for the sound effects. I think it's just making me fly better, though. There we go. Seaman is down. Priority number one, target zero, is down. I confirmed that kill. Inform the queen, please. Actually, wait, no, I'm flying into a Russian plane. Let Stalin know. The target number zero is down. All right. Fokowulf, just down there. So I guess it's kind of like a cycle of climbing up into the sky, diving down, making sure that you can kill singled out targets or like a few targets, or if you go into a furball that you have enough speed that you can just boom and zoom and get the hell out of there. So, oh, I could try to steal this one. Ah, what, am I, what do I mean steal? I mean secure, sorry. Secure the kill. Uh, it's not mine. So in the meantime, I'm just going to climb back to my lines, my side of the combat zone. And that BF-109 is up the top. And this... What the fuck? Did they crash into each other? I think they did. Okay. F7F down there. And a BF-109. I think I'm probably going to go for the BF-109. I think his... It's Seaman again! Hello, Seaman. Sounds such a dirty name. What's big, big, long, black, and full of seamen? Submarine. Okay. Not quite what it wanted to do. I wish I had air brakes to work with here. So I could just turn them on, bleed all my speed. But I don't. Now, I know this is kind of risky what I'm doing. You know how I should pull off and reset the situation? But then again, there's so much rock cover. And I see that the enemies are like ages away. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, I was panicking my radar, dude. My radar, it's just, it, sh it shows up that somebody's nearby and it's actually a seaman who's dead. Oh, actually it wasn't. I think it was somebody, I think it was somebody alive. What the fuck? Alright. Is what it is. Now beyond, or yonder, this mountain lie fresh blood. In the form of enemies. But I'm not gonna go in just yet because I'm actually not too confident over there. That's like two versus three. I don't have a big speed or altitude advantage over the rest. So reassessing my situation. Okay. Things are getting awkwardly close. I want to go for the easier kills like that Yak 9 down there, but it's not quite easy just yet because of all the guys. Now it's starting to pan out a little bit better. Like this Yak 9 is dead, so whatever. Ooh, everyone's going for the easy kills. God damn it, everyone understands what to do, don't they? I'm coming! I'm coming. Honey, I'm home. Honey, I is home. There we go. Nice and easy. Four kills, just like that. And I think there's going to be some enemies behind. So I'm going to climb up. And you guessed it. I'm going to reassess situation. Ooh, holy shit, that is a batarang. That's a batarang right there. And the batarang is going to fly away. So I'm going to dive down and hunt down some of these prints. But, holy shit, that was close. Kai84 who's climbing like that. That's lethal. Now, I'm going to go after the Falkwolf, even though I know he might die soon. He's an easy kill. But, it's too elusive. It was too good. Now I have to fly and reassess the situation. Get a grounding of what's going on in the battlefield. Go over this rock and drop on top of them. Hello there. Yak 9. 
UT. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, he's keeping on with his line. He wanted to kill something over there. One of my teammates. One of the two. Well, I stopped him before he could advance any firmer. Stopped them at the lines. And so I am at first place. Five kills. I guess as long as you're flying with this plane in a smart sort of fashion, not just like a moron, then you can do pretty darn well. Here we go. It's looking for some fresh spawn. There is some fresh spawn for me. Oh my god, that's a bear cat. So, gonna fly away. Because bear cat might be turning around. Bear cat, what are you doing? Are you coming for me or. Fuck you doing? He's coming for me. So, I'm just gonna keep flying away then. I'll wait till he gets, gets off. In fact, I might start flying around the mountain. There we go. And the Kai 102 is coming for me? I presume? Well, I'm using the mountain to my advantage. There we go. He's dead. And I'm not going to go for the Yak-9U because his angle was way too awkward. And if I tried to go for him, I might have crashed into the mountain. Which would be hilarious for you guys. But pretty damn infuriating for myself. Holy shit, my engine is 651 degrees Celsius. Something tells me that that is pretty hot. And I don't think you would survive in a temperature like that. Huh. That's like the normal temperature of California on a normal day, right? In winter. 652 degrees Celsius. Okay. That's a lot of enemies, but you know, I've kind of started flying out of this plane a bit too long now, and I'm kind of like in a suicidal mood. That's just what happens. If I've been in a plane for too long, I kind of start getting in a suicidal mood. Like, non-caring if I live or not. So, I am going to be stupid, and I'm going to go in now. This isn't actually too stupid just yet, because that middle plane died. So now I can go in, free roam, like a free-range chicken. Hi. Nice. Easy kills for the pickings. 657, my god, that's, a fl that's actually like the temperature of Florida on a winter's day. Hi. Want a tango? We will tango! Ooh, he's gonna dive away. Wrong move to make. Check. And mate. Huh. I think he should have tried to keep on, like, going at me. As in climbing upwards. That was his mistake. So, eight kills. Not bad. Gotta say, that's pretty damn good in this plane. Going down for the Act 3 now. Okay, not quite. Shots didn't line up perfectly. Gonna slow down, lower my engine throttle all the way. I completely lost sight of the fucker. And I'm gonna ram him. Because that was completely intentional. Totally intentional. Totally intent. I wanted to pass the cancer on. Totally 1000% intentional. And so there you guys go. That is the result of that match. I got 8 kills in my Yak-15 and I got 3 in my LA-7B20. We also lost the match, so that's how much my earnings actually are. So overall with this plane, you could probably say that although against Jets is probably pretty much cancer, this thing is actually pretty decent if you play it in a, in a safe manner like the one that I was doing through those matches against props. You have to make sure that you lower your battle rating as much as possible so that you get good matches like that. And you can do pretty damn decently well. Make sure you use the air targets belt because I'm not even joking that the stealth ammo is absolutely terrible on this thing. And make sure that you have this plane out on a crew that has a fast reload speed. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you have this plane, what do you think about it? And what plane or tank would you like me to go out in the next video? Alright guys. This is Krebs, and I'll catch you guys next time.